I'm going to read a couple things today, just just short, okay? I'm going I'm, I'm to finish this article, but today I'm only going to read a couple parts. We need to understand that without the blood in your body, you would not feel suffering or pain. So many people don't understand that. I mean, our heart pumps blood to all parts of our body. And that's what gives us the pain and suffering. Okay? Christ himself had to be done with blood. And he was. When he was crucified on that horrible pole, all the blood was taken out of his body. And then when he was raised by God the third day, he had no blood in it. Before he ascended to the Father. Okay? He still walked this earth for a few days after he was raised by God on this earth. He had no blood in his body. He didn't have to feel anything, right? In the sense of having a different type of body, yes. And this is what we're going to have, a different type of body with no blood. It'll be energ energized by God's power and God's spirit. That's what we want, and that's what we long for, and that's what we expect. That's our expectation. Okay, so I'm going to continue on what I, ha I, I was reading from yesterday. Good morning, Rob here. Happy Tuesday. Very Various forms of flesh. All flesh is not the same. However, in 1 Corinthians 15, 39, this is vital to our theme. We can see this in nature. Not only is there human flesh, but various forms of animal life have flesh also. From these we may learn the needful lesson that all flesh is adapted to its fear. The birds may fly in the air and the fishes swim in the sea. But woe to the bird that seeks the depths of the ocean or the fish that would fly in the empyrean. Both would die in a comparatively short time because their flesh is not fashioned for the element in w which they find themselves. Man may die beneath its, the water and jump into the air for a short space of time. He may prolong his stay in, by artificial means for a longer period. But his flesh is so constituted that it cannot live anywhere except on the surface of the earth from which it's made. Somebody's running a lawnmower out there. Hopefully, hopefully you can hear me. But now the lawnmower's gone, so I don't know. I guess you can still hear me. Airplanes and submarines are abnormal and are chiefly used as instruments of destruction and death. Flesh and blood go to corruption. Flesh and blood is not able to enjoy an allotment in the kingdom of God because it is corruptible. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 50. Flesh without blood tends to dis disintegrate, decompose, decay, putrefy, and return to the soil from which it came. It is by a constant renewal of elements from the soil through the blood that the living flesh is kept from total decomposition or corruption, such as would take place if it were severed from the body altogether, and there were no blood to replace the waste and repair the tissue. This is what takes place at death. The beginning of decomposition commences long before life ceases. That has been going on from the start even before birth. Before death it is, it is counteracted by the assimilation of food and oxygen in healthy youthful organisms, but to a dis diminishing degree as age decre de decreases the vitality. Let us repeat this important fact in other words, soil from the ground formed into an organism by the hand of God would soon return to the soil without blood to bring further supplies in the form of food as well as oxygen from the air to replace the losses due to the disintegration which results from the life processes. If we take a piece of flesh which is cut off from the supplies and, takes no, and take no measures to hinder it from spoiling, it will soon decompose and disappear with very disagreeable accompaniments. This simple fact in nature which all men have observed give the word flesh its special meaning and usage in, the, in God's word. It is corruptible, part of man, often miscalled the sinful nature and other misleading terms. When, man, when mankind is called flesh by the figure near association, it does not mean merely that he is composed of organic soil or that he has a body, but that he is corruptible and mortal. Okay, I'm going to stop there today. Why? Because I'm preparing to go on a little fishing trip. I got my fishing license yesterday. Thank God. He graced me with that. 
So yeah, I'm going to do some fishing today. And I will continue tomorrow with the rest of this article. And it starts with metabolism. Metabolism is the process in which creatures, that's what the medical profession actually calls it, metabolism. It's actually the process of building and demolishing the bodies of living creatures. There you go. That's the definition of metabolism. Okay, so I'm going to go into that a little bit more deeper tomorrow. And with that, I will say grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Have a wonderful day in the Lord. Happy Tuesday, and we will see you tomorrow.